Good morning, everyone. Let's all be upstanding. What a privilege it is to be here and worship with you all. Let's sing.
Let's pray. Father, we are your creation and we, we come to you, our creator, Lord. And we are in awe of you, Father, that you created us. But, Lord, in your wisdom, you call us brothers and sisters. Lord, that we are your children. We are your brothers and sisters. And, God, we come to you today. Some of us come rejoicing because you've answered some prayers some of us are coming, Father, because we've been praying and praying and, and we're despairing and we, we don't know if we'll ever have an answer. And God, some of us are coming because we feel weak and, and, and maybe we're just here because it's just what we do on Sunday. But God, I know that you have come here with one purpose only and that is to pour your love into our hearts. So God, I just pray that as we hear the word this morning, Lord, that even when you use the word as a sword to, to cut deep into our hearts, Lord, I pray that, that your love will be the thing that shines forth, Lord, that your love will shine into the hearts of every person here, Lord, that it will shine light, it will shine hope, and it will shine love. Um, because you are love, Father. You, that's, the na that's your name, Lord. You are, you are our Father of love. So, God, we just welcome you here, and we just say, have your way in this place. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Well, welcome to church this morning. So great to have you here. If you didn't know, Carolyn was praying over With the side there. With a broken foot. Because she's got a broken foot, so she couldn't come up onto the platform. <laughs> thank you so much, But thank Carolyn. you for praying for us. <laughs> oh. However you've come broken today, we're glad that you're in the house of God. <laughs> we're in and, the best uh, place. <laughs> it's good to be back. We've had a couple of weeks in New, in Zealand, New Zealand, which yes. was great, but it's great to be back home. And we have to then announce part of the trip was obviously we were seeing the sites and visiting churches, but Jacob and Michaela got engaged. Congratulations. So that was great. We love you guys. So why don't you turn to someone around and about you and say, I do. Whatever they're going <laughs> to ask you, you have to say, I do. Hopefully you're sitting next to the right person. Well, this morning, uh, we are very privileged uh, to have one of my mentors. I guess uh, we can kind of call him a father of the house. We, uh, he's come basically every year uh, since I've been uh, in this lead role, which is coming up for 10 years uh, in, a, in a few weeks' time. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know that we need to necessarily give him fancy titles or anything like that because he feels at home and we want you to feel at home 
Um, but yeah, we are very privileged and blessed this morning to have uh, Pastor Danny come and share the word. So would you welcome him as he comes this morning? Thank you, Danny. Good morning. How are you? Great. You're not supposed to have favourites, but this place is so dear to me in my heart. Spent quite a, a lots of opportunities with your pastors. Uh, we love them dearly. We love the motive of this house. You know, uh, right now across the body of Christ, God is speaking very clearly about humility, that we come before God in humility. And I find this house to be an incredible example through your leaders and through who you are as a church. I brag about you everywhere I go because uh, I just love the richness of what God's doing here. Uh, I talk to pastors all over this country and overseas who are struggling to raise young people and to raise them and release them and believe in them and release them into ministry. And yet here at Murray Bridge, you don't seem to have a problem with that. You keep raising an army of young people, believing them. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being amazing mum and dad to the house. And we honour you and we really respect you uh, so much. Well, this morning I've got a subject that it's meaning a lot to me right now and I think it's affecting the whole body of Christ. And, and, and it's just simply this, change is good for us. Change is good for us and I want to speak on the subject of change. Now, first of all, your pastors aren't resigning or leaving. Uh, we're not, we're not uh, turning the whole church around the other way and put the stage over there or, you know, it, it's in all of us, we're on an ongoing journey with Jesus and we're forever changing. And at 68 years of age, I thought I could start relaxing and just getting to a place where I could just do a few things and, and God has just brought responsibility my way again that I believe that whatever space God calls you to, there's a grace for that space. I really do. And the church that my wife and I pioneered in 1994, uh, recently, about a year ago, had a change of leadership. And so then I was invited back to come and help the church find its future and find new leaders. And so uh, I wasn't planning that. I didn't expect that to happen. And, and, and my flesh was going, oh, do I have to, you know? Uh, you know, I thought I was going to have an easier life. Uh, but then the Holy Spirit got hold of me. And when God gets hold of us, the change He brings about in us won't make us groan. It'll make us grow. And I want to keep growing till the day that Jesus comes back because there's joy in our growth with Him. And so I want to speak about that subject today. Uh, I have a subtitle. It's called, How Many Cats Are Tied to Your Bedpost? How many cats are tied to your bedpost? It's the story of some anthropologists many years ago went to South America to watch the behaviour and study the behaviour of certain religious groups. And there was a group, there was a tribe that they used to sacrifice fish to their gods. It was part of their worship. And so before they went to worship, they would tie their cats to the bedpost so the cats wouldn't run into the temple and eat the fish. And so the anthropologists are studying this and here's this tribe tying their cats to the bedpost but they weren't sacrificing fish. And so they were saying, why do you do this? And they go, because it's our tradition. We did it 50 years ago. We've been doing it for the last 50 years. So why do you do it? We don't know. It's just part of what we do. So 50 years earlier, that tribe had stopped sacrificing fish to their gods, but they still kept tying the cats to the bedpost. And sometimes in our Christian walk, and you, you've heard me before, I'm not into churchianity, but I am into Christianity in following Jesus. And, and in following Jesus, you know, the scripture that says for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever that verse is straight after another verse that says, follow the leaders that have been a good example before you. Follow their example of godliness. Follow the way they have lived and follow them in their example for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. In other words, God's patterns don't change. God's pattern of how we do life and how we do church don't change. But how many of us know our methods do? And I've seen churches split over methods 
rather than the message and the mandate that God has for the church. And so for me, I'm living in a time where I'm 68 and I feel like I've seen so much change in the body of Christ. I remember many, many years ago, there was a, 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 a gathering here in Adelaide called the Charismatic Convention. Some of you will remember that, where 10,000 people would come and gather and I met some of my mentors, Pastor Frank Damasio, who I met at the Charismatic Convention, became one of my spiritual mentors. I had the privilege of running the youth side of that convention and we thought it was the beginning of revival and it was an amazing time. But it's amazing a few years down the track, not happening anymore. I remember going to Sturt Street CRC as a 19-year-old, uh, I'd only just got married. We married young in those days. And my wife and I were the support band for a guy called Keith Green. And Keith Green, who's passed away, got killed at the age of 27, wrote some of the most amazing songs. And churches would gather in Sturt Street CRC from all different parts of the body of Christ so we could worship God together. And that was awesome. But that time's passed. And I've seen so many moves that were so good but didn't last that long. And I want to prophesy today that we're about to see God do something so powerful in our own city and God is beginning to drop the label. Well, we are beginning to drop the labels of denomination and God is bringing the body of Christ together. And I see a picture of many of those things happening again in our city. And this house is so kingdom oriented that I believe that this house and I hope I'm prophesying correctly here this morning but I believe we're going to partner together across the body I know I can rely on this house because there's a heart after God there's a heart for the kingdom but are we willing for God to make some changes in all of us so we can keep growing and moving forward in what he has for us at the birth of our church in 1994 uh, I had no idea how to run a church. We were sent, not went, because if you went, you have ability, but if you're sent, you have authority. And we were sent by spiritual covering to start what has been Edge Church. And I had no idea on what to do with the people coming from different parts of the body of Christ. Some had come from Lutheran, some had come from Baptist, they'd come from all different backgrounds, some charismatic, some Pentecostals. And I said, God, how, how do I lead? And he took me to the scripture, which we're going to go through a little bit today in Luke chapter 5, that I pray can be an encouragement to all of us. I'm going to start at the end of the chapter and I'm going to read from verse 39. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. New wine must be stored in new wineskins. But no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. The old is just fine. And sadly, as I travel around our nation and beyond our nation, spend a lot of time in New Zealand, you can see people rising up with a real openness of heart. Hey, God, what are you saying? What are you doing? Where are we going? And others who say, look, the way we used to do it is just fine. And I remember this passage of Scripture becoming such a powerful help to me. And it's the story of Jesus telling Peter to launch into the deep after a night of catching nothing. Gone fishing, many of you know the story. They caught nothing. And then I'd like to pick up the story in verse 1 and just read a few verses and just talk about the power of change when God initiates change. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, his owner, to push out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, just remember that, he said to Simon, now go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. I want to just stop there and just pick up some points today. Number one, I want to talk about the pattern of change. Right now, around our world, there's so much change 
in people's identity. There's confusion. There's confusion in the world. There's confusion. We've just been watching on the news, uh, you know, a religious man being attacked in a church. And our whole nation is in turmoil over people uh, living in a state where so much is changing around us. We We don't know who we are anymore. It's happening everywhere. And yet in this passage of Scripture... I found a way from God to lead change in my own life personally because I think there's some of you in the room this morning that you are noticing there's a lot of change happening in your life and and things are shifting and you thought you were going to go here but you're now going here and now this is happening and there's a part of you that's a little bit insecure with all that and I believe this morning God's going to give you peace. He's going to give you encouragement through this passage of Scripture. So number one, the pattern of change is verse 4. When Jesus had finished speaking. Friends, there's a difference between good ideas and God ideas. You know, there's enough creativity in this house, you can come up with new ideas every every second day. So there's enough uh, dreams in the house, you could come up with so much exciting things to do, and yet the power of godly change, divine change, is waiting for Jesus to finish speaking. After Jesus finished speaking. So Peter, in the natural, didn't catch any fish. He's an expert fisherman. He didn't have a great night. He didn't have a great day. And then wants to sort of hang the hat up for the night and say, we're done. But after Jesus finished speaking, Peter says, we've been fishing all night. Nothing's happened. But if you say so. I want to tell you, my friends, today, I never thought my life would end up where it is today. I never thought we would go through triumphs and tragedy. Many of you know my story. I don't need to repeat it here today about the loss of a son and the brokenness of a son and just so many uh, health challenges. And I never knew those things were going to come. But I also didn't know that God was going to, after Sharon and I said yes, after he spoke, We had no idea things would end up the way they have. And I want to tell you, friends, I hope this doesn't come across too simple this morning, but how much do we trust God? How much do we trust God when we say yes to Him? Because my life has ended up very differently, and yet I know it's right, it's where it should be, because Sharon and I waited for Jesus to finish speaking. And once we knew He had spoken, our amen and our yes. Can you imagine Abraham, you know, Take your son and sacrifice. I would ask a lot of questions. What on earth are you asking me to do this for? You know, Noah, go forward, multiply, have dominion. But didn't tell him what was going to happen in the plain of Shinar in chapter 11 of Genesis where something began to get built that became a Tower of Babel. I remember the day when God said to me, labels will become the Tower of Babel. Because we're not here to build labels, we're here to build the kingdom of God. But I'm so grateful today that in my own life, I've been able to follow God after he's finished speaking. And the point I want to make here this morning is you don't have to panic or worry about any change in your life, God repositioning your roles or whatever's happening or what you're doing with your business. You don't have to worry if you allow Jesus to speak. And if he speaks into that situation, after he finishes speaking, you can follow him and know that the fruit will come. The results will be good. And he's never let me down. Even though he didn't tell me all the negative things that were going to happen in our life, I stand before you today in the middle of a miracle right now. When the gentleman who left the church that took over after me a year ago left, it looked like our whole church was going to hit the wall. We didn't have any direction of what are we going to do. And then I'm driving down Anzac Highway and I'm crying my eyes out. I'm saying, God, you need to finish speaking. You need to speak. And he gives me one word, one word and tells me to ring one person. And after that phone call, a miracle began where now today what was Edge Church has become Equipus Church, which is based in New Zealand, an apostolic house that sends out people from all over the world. Now listen to this. I was prophesied just before I got cancer that I would have a voice in Europe and, and, and it never happened. I got cancer. Uh, you know, I thought I'd never travel again. And I thought that prophecy was wrong. Well, now we've joined the Equipus family. They've just happened to start three churches in Italy. Two in Rome, one in Sicily. I'm Italian. 
And this week they said, can you go to Europe? And can you go and raise the leaders and train the leaders? And the prophecy that was given all those years ago in my mind was never going to come to pass. And here we are now at my latter years, the very things that God had put in my heart are all coming around and coming to pass because you just wait for Jesus to finish speaking. And I hope you get that today because when he speaks, it's not just a good idea, it's a God idea. So when we started in 1994, the Lord asked me to do three things. He said, embrace divine change with people that have divine connection. So divine change has to flow with people that have divine connection. And with those people, you build a divine culture. And I've seen that happen over 20 years of pastoring a church, of God bringing divine change into our lives. We never knew why God told us to renovate the Adelaide Children's Hospital. We had no idea why God told us to feed the poor in our community other than the gospel teaches us to do it. But there was a rhema word from God that we needed to do this and had no idea whether that was going to end up. And I remember being in Sweden one time preaching at a church. I'd never preached there before. And the pastor gets up and he goes, Pastor Danny, we just want to say, after watching a video of you guys transforming a hospital in Australia, we are now renovating our local school and we're doing community projects by just watching a video. You thought, wow, we didn't even know that was going to happen. But when you say yes to the divine change that God brings into our lives, things happen with less stress. They happen with less drivenness. They happen with a sense of ease and comfort because Jesus finished speaking. Number two, the purpose of change. So we've seen, number one, the pattern of change is that Jesus has to speak first. You know, there's so many things happening in your church and this thing, you've been really good at planting people out and doing all those kind of... But the whole thing is, if they've got ideas, you'll never suffer for that. God will bless the house for that because you'll see God continually raise up armies of leaders and people. Number two, the purpose of change. The purpose of change is not about programs. It's about people. The purpose of change is about people. In verse 12 of this passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 5, Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. We've just heard a whole story, or you can read a whole story about fishing, but it's got nothing to do with fishing. We are fishers of men. And this story was to give us a pattern of what the purpose of change is, and the purpose is that people's lives are changed. We exist to see people's lives transformed. I know this is very simple today, but I believe this. I live this. And he heals a man with leprosy, which speaks to us often in the Bible as sin. God is wanting to save people from their brokenness and from their sin. I meet every Friday with about six business people. I've mentioned that to you before. I've been meeting with them for oh, four or five years now. And sometimes the language doesn't get better and uh, things just go off. And I'm going, two weeks ago, I said, Lord, I don't know if I can stay. I think I'm not sure that this is really helping. And I just thought, I don't know if I can draw from this or I can help this. And then yesterday, sorry, Friday, what's today? Sunday, yeah. Friday, the lunch gets cancelled. We're supposed to have a lunch together. The lunch gets cancelled and one of the guys rings me up. And he goes, I know the lunch has been cancelled, but I need to see you. I said, well, come to my house. We'll have lunch at my place. So he came to my house on Friday, poured his heart out. The first time he encountered the Holy Spirit was at Portside Church down the port there at CRC down there. And he walked in one day and got touched by God but never did anything with it. He's now going through major challenges in his life. And in my dining room on Friday, I led him to Jesus Christ. He bawled his eyes out. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Because God changing me is not about me. God, God changing me is so that I can be an instrument to change the lives of others to be God's hands, to be God's feet, to be God's mouth. And here we see the story of a man healed from leprosy. In verse 17, he then heals a paralyzed man 
And I remember reading that all those years ago and God said, there's a paralyzed community out there that have got no direction. They've got no way of walking into their destiny. They don't know how to make decisions in their life. And I've called you to be a fisher of men because people need their sins forgiven, but they also need to find purpose in their life and they need to find direction. And now at my age at this time, uh, you know, I'm trying to sound really old. I mean, it's not that old, but, you know, I'm realizing, wow, all that God did all those years was never about me. It was never about how big my church was going to be. It was about God living his life through me to see the lives of people changed, to see pastors encouraged that have lost some of their direction. And right now, there's so many discouraged leaders, so many discouraged pastors. And I just count it a privilege that we can be there because Jesus finished speaking. And when Jesus spoke to my heart at the age of 19 and said, I'm going to call you to bind together, I didn't even know what that was going to mean. I didn't know what that meant. And now all these years later, I'm seeing a coming together of the body of Christ across the different denominations. And God is faithful. When he finishes speaking, the catch will be big. The fruit will be great because he finished speaking. So number two, the purpose of change is to help people. There's also the story of Levi, the tax collector, here in Luke chapter 5, uh, and it says that he uh, was a very rich person. He'd made a lot of money by ripping people off. And sometimes you don't find fulfillment in riches. One of the things that's happening right now is I'm getting to minister to a lot of wealthy people in our city who don't know Jesus. And you think, you know, they need Jesus because all their wealth has brought no happiness. It's brought no joy. In fact, it's brought levels of depression for some of them. And I want to say to you today that we, the church, are not here just to run programs. And I know you're not, but we're here for people. We're here for people. And when Jesus finishes speaking, it's, never all, it's not always convenient. It doesn't always fit in our time slot. Uh, I've just been asked for three days a week for I don't know how long now to be back at my mother's house, still work with the body of Christ, but to help move the church forward. And in the natural, it's the wrong timing. I'm supposed to be slowing down, as I said before. But in my spirit, I know Jesus has spoken. And because of that, we don't have to burn out. You know, this pastors burn out because they take on so much stuff, but it's not initiated by God. So if we initiate stuff by the flesh, we'll burn out because the flesh has got to look after it. But if God initiates the change, that even when we don't have all the answers and even when we don't have all the clarity, God will come through. Now, I, again, I'm not trying to give you the ministry of hints this morning. I'm just trying to be obedient to the word God put in my heart. And whether you are about to, we haven't spoken, but whether you're about to find uh, other breakthroughs that God has for you and things he wants you to do, I know you're led by leaders that are wait for Jesus to finish speaking. And if you wait for that, can I encourage you today, change is good for us. Now, number three, the people who activate change. So we've seen the purpose of change, the pattern of change, and the people who activate change. A, are people who believe in the sovereignty of God. God is sovereign. Why would he choose a church in Murray Bridge? Why wouldn't he? I'm not saying why would he, you know, Murray Bridge, but don't want it to sound like that, but... But, you know, why would he choose me? I, I didn't finish school. I, I'm not a uh, university-educated person. But God chooses who he chooses. Why did he choose Peter's boat? Imagine the other guys in the other boat going, it's always Peter's boat. <laughs> Peter, it always happens for Peter. You know, Peter's the hero. Peter shows up everywhere. He's the emotional leader. But interesting that the other boat never went home. The other boat stayed by the shore and then Peter... Uh, steps into the deep, sees the big catch and calls the partner boat. They're already partners, partner boat. I, I want to prophesy this morning. There's a lot of churches that are coming into a spiritual partnership. I feel that with you. I feel a spiritual partnership. It's not a same denomination. It's not about any of that because I believe something is going to hit our city. I really believe. I've just been to New Zealand where uh, these guys have been and I was there just before them. And on a Wednesday night, 10,000 people gather to pray. 10,000 people in Auckland gathered to pray. I cried my eyes out as I stood there and watched all different parts of the body of Christ. The volume of the praying was louder than the music. And they had 2,000 people outside that couldn't get in. And then went to every city. So I've just come back from being in every city in New Zealand. One night per city. And in every city, there's a gathering of God's church coming together to believe for revival and pray for revival. And I felt the Lord say, do you remember? 
I don't know if some of you were around when we had a prayer meeting at the entertainment centre and 9,000 people, 10,000 people showed up and we turned 2,000 away. The following year we did it again, another 9,000 people. And I always felt in my heart that it was unfinished business. And I'm not giving you direction today, I'm just sharing my dream for our city. And can you imagine if we had a prayer meeting in the entertainment centre and called the Premier of the city in and said, we've taken up an offering tonight because the churches have covered the cost of the hiring of the place. And can you imagine if we took up an offering and gave it to the leaders of our city and said, that goes to the Children's Hospital on behalf of the churches of South Australia. Can you imagine what would happen? Because people think the church is irrelevant. People are turning their backs on the church. There is an attack on the church in Australia. Australia is fast becoming a non-Judeo-Christian country. And in our country right now, uh, across the media, uh, I I got to have... um, uh, Some of you have heard of a guy called Greg Sheridan, who is a writer for the Australian... He's one of Australia's top reporters, uh, journalists. And he was in one of our meetings in New Zealand. In Wellington and he came and sat with us at dinner and spoke about how God touched him that night in the meeting I shared the story of our family and what we went through and he really wept and felt God touch him um, there's a journey towards God but as one of Australia's top journalists he opened my eyes to some of the stuff that's happening behind the scenes and the church is attacked so much in our nation there's a lot of tolerance for every other belief system but there's no tolerance for the church. But let me tell you, this is not a time for the church to sit back and take that. This is a time for the church to rise up and pray, for the church to rise up and be the light in the darkness. And I really believe that is coming. And so I'm very excited. But the people that activate change are people who acknowledge who God is using. I, please don't think I'm blowing smoke this morning, please. God has chosen this house. Uh, I, I, I do discern in my own spirit things and, I, and God has chosen this house to have such a unique anointing and it's such a non-driven thing but it's coming from the heart of God and so I'm so excited for you guys I really am in what God is doing because God chooses who he wants to choose he chooses people who are faithful who do their everyday well sometimes we want God to choose us for things but You know, we want to serve the God of Gunner. One day it's going to happen. But I believe God wants us to be faithful in our everyday and then He comes looking for us. And even in our everyday where it feels like we haven't caught any fish and it feels like we've done our best but nothing's happened, be, be aware God will come. God will come if we are faithful in our everyday and He will expand. And I just felt when I was praying for you that there is expansion coming for you as a church but it's not going to burn you out It's not going to break you. What it's going to do is you're going to have strength for the stretch. And there's a growing. You'll be growing in Him. And some of you will take on responsibilities. I never knew I could do that. Whether it's in the youth or whether it's in other areas. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when God shifts the posts a little bit because God is growing everybody involved and everybody wins. I started as a home group leader. I thought that's all I would do. And then I started to lead worship at church and I thought that's all I would do. Then I'm set to go down and look after a church for a while. I thought that's all I'm going to do. I never thought this is the doorway to something greater because what we do every day is great if we're living in obedience to God. And so I believe that God is about to bring great expansion uh, to the house and I'm not talking just numbers I'm talking growth in giftings so that we can serve God I hope this witnesses with some of you Uh, he chooses people who are faithful doers in their everyday and he also chooses people who don't allow disappointments to stop them launching again I do want to prophesy again and I use that word very carefully there's a lot of people coming home to Christianity in the next two years there's a lot of people got disappointed with the church A lot of people got hurt by the church and they left and they call themselves Christians, but they're not churchgoers. And I want to tell you, God's bringing the family home. He's bringing people back that have walked away. I'm watching it happen every week right now as people that I knew 30 years ago have come back to faith and they're not allowing their disappointment to stop them from launching again. And I want to tell you, we've got to get ready for that. We've got to get ready because God's bringing a lot of the prodigals home. I really believe that with all my heart. He also uses people that are willing to take risks. It was a risk for Peter to launch out into the deep again. But Jesus had finished speaking. But even then in his flesh, he would have thought, I bet you we're not going to catch anything. And later on, I'm going to tell him, I told you so. 
But you know what? He was willing to take the risk. Because we need to be a people that have a predisposition to obedience. A predisposition to obedience. I'm not the greatest faith man on the planet or anything like that. But I actually trust, you've got to hear this. Can you trust Jesus in your I don't know? I've, I've shared this with some of your leaders. When Ezekiel, God says to Ezekiel, can these dead bones live? And Ezekiel was really honest. He said, only you know. But he knew that God knew. If you, you know God, and then God began to breathe on dead, broken bones. I want to say this. If we can get to a place in our lives where when things happen, we don't understand, we know the God who does know what's going on. And we put our trust in him. You know, I was planning my life to go down a particular direction only a year ago. And right now, all the changes that have happened to my wife, myself, our family. And yet I know I can trust God because Jesus finished speaking. And because he spoke, I can follow. He's never going to hurt me. He's only going to release me into all that he has for me. And I just feel that there's people, I want the musicians to come back, but I, I just feel there's people in the room today that there is a... There is a grace for your space. There's a stretch in coming. And it might not look like the way you thought. It might only be a few of you, but it could be in a marriage situation. It could be uh, stretching your faith to believe for a home. Uh, there's a lot, it can't, it's not just about church. It's about life. I trust Jesus with my life. You know, um, even financially, if I can be this open with you. Until just recently, I said to my wife, I don't know how we're going to survive. And yet in the last few months, God's turned all that around and he's brought us right back to where we need to be and he's providing our needs. How good is that? He's an amazing God. And so, yeah, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> so we've seen the people of change. That's the people of change. But the power of change is it ignites faith, it sees results, it grows us, it releases the miraculous, it keeps us depending on God, it keeps us trusting God and we feel him close to us. God has an amazing purpose for this house. And I believe God is raising team unity. Team unity in this house where God is, it's never going to be built on superstars and they don't ever want to be that. Uh, but they are pastors that love you dearly. But I believe the whole spirit of team that you have here already is even going to be enlarged in this season. And you're going to build divine culture through divine change with divine connections. Walking on the beach one day, saying to God, Lord, what do I, how do I build this church? What do I do when we started in 1994? And he put this in my head. The risks that you take from revelation, I will always reward with results. The risks that you take that flow from revelation, I will always reward with results. The pureness of your motives will determine the clearness of your vision. I close with this. Our motives should never change. Our message should never change. Our mission should never change, the great commandment and the great commission. But our methods do. Our methods do. Let's not get consumed with methods and forget our motives and message and mission. Because Peter responded to the words of Jesus, faith was activated. Faith comes by hearing after Jesus finished speaking. Faith acts on what it hears. Faith will see results. Faith is not competitive. And faith-inspired results lead to humility and not pride. Because after this miracle happens, Peter falls to his knees and says, Get away from me, Lord. I'm, I'm undone. You know, Because when God does miracles, our hearts are broken. Go, God, I know that wasn't me. I know that was you. When I led my friend to the Lord on Friday, I just stood behind him in my house and I just put my hands on his shoulders and I just wept over him and just wept and wept and wept. And I'm feeling stupid. And I'm going, grow up, you know, you just pray for a friend. Why do you lose it? But then I, I get a text message yesterday and it was like along the lines of, thanks for weeping for me. And when you're dealing with mental health issues, you're dealing with issues of depression and all those kind of things. Isn't it great that the church of Jesus Christ is not caught up in just doing church world, but out there for the broken, 
That story is about a man who couldn't walk, no direction. A man full of leprosy, sin. Our world is full of sin and brokenness. And then Matthew, the tax collector, no joy in the rich, riches of life. This is the time for the gospel to shine, friends. The gospel of Jesus is about to shine like we've never seen before in our city. Let me tell you, there's stuff happening behind the scenes right now that I believe God is speaking. And when we finish hearing him speak, we're going to be able to launch into the deep and we're going to see a great catch. Uh, let's just bow our heads in prayer this morning. Uh, I just feel in the room today, uh, I hope it's, it's probably a different kind of word that I would preach on a Sunday morning, but I just felt I wanted to speak into the atmosphere of this house because I sense God will trust this house. God trusts this house uh, with being agents of change for the purpose of the kingdom, not for the purpose of your name, denomination or anything like that. And there are people in the room, I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but I want to pray and I want to make sure I'm hearing right. There's people in the room that in the last four or five weeks, there's been a level of anxiety over the changes that are happening in your life. And today God wants to say to you, trust me, just listen to my voice. I will lead you. You will not burn out. You won't hit the wall. And if that's you today and you've been in that sense of uptightness, I'd love you just to slip up your hand and put it down again. I'll just see it. Thank you, 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 thank you. I'm thankful. Thank you so much. Jesus, if we could just put our hands out in front of us where we're sitting this morning. Jesus, Lord, I tried to be obedient to the word that I didn't want to bring, but I just felt this was the right one for today. That, Lord, these dear people, so many, Lord, right now, this morning, Jesus, will you put such peace in their heart? Lord Jesus, will you just put peace right now? God's peace, God's peace. God's peace, but also lift our trust today, Lord. We want to lift our trust today to go, God, you've got, I trust you with me. I trust you with what you're going to do with me. Lord Jesus, I pray for every hand that's been raised this morning. Please shift something inside of them. Wow, wow. The Lord's saying some of you are confused and you're asking for clarity. And the Lord is saying, as you spend time in my word, I will surprise you and I will bring clarity. You won't stay in a place of confusion, but clarity will come in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. While every head's still bowed, there's people here this morning and you feel the Lord is calling you to, to something, greater is not the right word, but to something that you need to step into. God is asking you to step into something and you've been struggling with it because you're going, but I don't know, one, if I've got the time to. I don't know where I'm the person for this. And you've been struggling on the inside, but your heart is to honour Him and respond to Him. If that's you, I'd like you to slip up your hand because I want to pray with you right now. Thank you, God bless you. 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 Father, your will is good for us. You never burn us out. Father, you bring us into liberty. And Lord, I pray that over this whole church and everyone that just raised their hand right now, there'll come a new sweetness of absolute rest inside that whatever God calls me to, He will equip me for it. Uh, he will grow me. Some of you don't know what's in you because you haven't taken that step. But as you do, it will grow within you. And you'll be able to look back one day and go, wow, I'm glad I said yes. I'm glad I said yes. This morning, right across this room, you might be here and you're disconnected from God. Maybe you've never connected with God ever. Or you've been coming to church, but your faith walk has been sort of thwarted and you feel like, I don't know where I'm at with God. I don't even know if God knows I'm here. And today you say, Pastor Danny, pray with me. Uh, I need to get reconnected with God today. I'd like to pray for you. Wherever you are, you know who you are. God is speaking to you. Slip up your hand and I'd just love to pray for you. Thank you, God bless 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 you. Well, I'm going to hand back. We're going to stand and worship. 
uh, with a song right now. But if you raised your hand to connect with God and you feel you need to talk to me about it because you can talk to people around you, but I'm happy to talk to you after the meeting and pray with you and explain a bit more to you on how to get reconnected with Jesus. Love you guys. Hey, love you guys. Just I feel such great things coming this, the way of this house and, uh, and I just sense that God is preparing you. And please don't be frightened by that because I think it's a good thing. It's a fantastic thing. What I'm going into right now is exciting. What started off as a problem has ended up into the purposes of God in such an incredible way. And I just feel for you, God's going to give you strength for the stretch. Father, strength for the stretch. Strength to be able to grow into all that you have. Lord, it's not more hours. It's not more time. It's not giving more commitment because this house is committed to you. But Father, it's that inner knowing of saying yes after you finish speaking. So I pray for, Lord, the pastors of this house. I pray, Lord Jesus, that there'll be such a clarity of direction and vision as we keep building the kingdom together. And uh, thank you that this house, Lord, is filled with trophies of your amazing grace. And we look forward to the many stories and miracles that are going to flow out of this place. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we all stand and just worship the Lord. Thank you, guys. Love you guys heaps. Bless you. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand And everything around me shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never Thank you.
Precious blood. 
God, we just want to glorify you in this place. We want to glorify that the precious blood of Jesus Christ has covered our sins, have redeemed us from the pit. And God, we just give you glory for that. That was a massive feat. That was something that no human being could do. We thank you that you are our saviour, that your love reached down and touches us so individually with such purpose, with, with such a beautiful destiny of Jesus Christ and uh, in heaven. And so, God, we just pray, Father, that it's not just for us. It's for us to look around and to reach out to others. And we just thank you, Father, that you have graced us. You have graced us for this. You've graced us for the stretch. You've graced us to, to, to wear your mandate of being a Christian well. So God, we just pray your blessing upon each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, you can grab your seats and uh, we pray that that message was a message in season for you and what you're going through and uh, hopefully you can look forward to the future with, uh, look forward, yeah, to the future with hope that... You know, change can sometimes be hard, um, but the change that God is leading us to it's is always, always better. Good. It's yeah, always good. Yeah. It's always better. So, so great. Yeah. All right, a few announcements, things happening in and around the there life is. of church in the next couple of weeks. So firstly, on Tuesday, Tuesday. Yes. Uh, we have our gather night. So it's the, the first Tuesday of the, of the term. And so we're gathering together. So all leaders, even if you don't serve yet, but you want to come you're along. You're all welcome. You're all welcome to come along. So we've got down 6.20, is that right? Yeah, it's supposed to be for pre-show games, Josh. 6.20, pre-show games. We, we like to games. have a bit of game. We, College is back on. So we will still have, at 5 o'clock, we'll have uh, oh, powerhouse. powerhouse will be on. So if you awesome. want to come in at 5, you can come in at 5. Um, but uh, yeah, but we have our gather night, so make sure you come along for that. So six twenty. That's Pastor Mark, isn't it? Yeah, Mark sharing the word awesome. uh, for gather night. So come along; it's going to be a great time. And supper afterwards, and next Sunday we have our communion service, the first Sunday of every month, and that is Pastor Seb, or he is going to be ordained. That's, he, yeah, that, well, that's the next announcement. That's the next but, announcement. But yeah, so we've got. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got communion service, then we've Seb. got you preaching. Yes, yeah, so we're starting yes. a new series. Um, That's right. Which is going to be really, really live exciting. Live like Jesus, isn't it? Yeah, live like Jesus. So it's sort of in the lead up to Pentecost. So it's all about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if you're keen to know more about Bring the Holy Spirit on. or you're new to, to faith or whatever, it's going to be a great uh, series to come along to and find out more uh, about that. That's uh, that's going to be great. Yes, and coming up, yeah. we've got the CRC conference, which is where three of our beautiful pastors are going up to the next from trainee to state pastor. So we want to congratulate. We've got Pastor Jacob Galash. We've got Seb, and have we got Walter? We do have Walter. Walter, we have I Walter's thought you were already here. like I don't know. <laughs> like everyone's already amazing. So please come along. Um, this is part of our flock, so we love you to sh- shout out a real roar as we um, celebrate and support these guys as they take their next, I don't know, ordination, like their next yeah. whatever. Yeah, so it's next Thursday. So not this week, but the following week on the Thursday at uh, Sturt CRC. Street at uh, Adelaide Christian Centre yep. uh, at 7.30. So. Uh, pastors will be there for a conference sort of over a couple of days but if you want to come down just for the night session and support the guys you're most welcome nights are free so yeah I feel like you can get along to that it's yeah be great. we always uh, announce lunch and I have no idea what's cooking for lunch today do you know what's cooking it look like baked potatoes baked it's not potatoes. on the screen we have no idea Yum. but it's baked potatoes I think Yum. yeah we're hearing lots of nods yes and probably something delicious for dessert absolutely and uh, Brownies. Brownies. Yum. Jason's already put his order in. <laughs> he's already he's already spied it out. But yeah, again, if you're a, if you're a visitor here, we want you to stay around after the service. But we want you also know that uh, your finances for that 100% of the profits for that go towards our uh, schools in Cambodia. 
Um, and uh, we had a report come through just this last week that both the schools are growing yes. and there's a greater need. There's and so, people just coming in off the yeah. street and they're just baptising them in bathtubs like guys that are just been dishevelled off the street. It's just amazing what's happening over there, yeah. really. So be generous out there. Be generous in here. Uh, we've got our offering boxes uh, at the back and outside. So if you've come with cash and you want to uh, give to the work of this church, we'd love to partner with you. The details are also up on the screen there for our Build the House and our Beyond the House. There's growing needs in both of those uh, areas. So in the Build the House, like we're pretty well packed today. We're we going to need to expand. That's maybe what some of the change that Danny was, was prophesying. But to do that, it takes money. It takes finances. And uh, also, as we said, even with the Beyond the House, with the, the schools in Cambodia growing and different things. So if you can partner with us uh, and honestly, join with us. Honestly, Josh, it's really partnering with heaven and it's kingdom yeah, currency, isn't it? it it's is. already his. And, you know, we try and find good banks where we're secure in this bank or this interest rate or whatever. But we're secure in God and his interest rate on what he's doing here on earth and the people that we need to reach here in the Murray Bridge, what's happening behind closed doors. We need to partner with these people to rip them out of their darkness and into the kingdom of light. And so... Partnering with Heavenly Kingdom Purpose is always a done deal. You can bet your bottom dollar on that, Joshy. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. That's great. Okay. The next announcement is, I'll praise in the valley, I'll praise on the mountain. <laughs> so let's stand. That's the lyric to the song, if you don't know. So let's stand, let's yes, praise. Yes, let's praise. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the praise. So I want you to praise Him with all of your heart this morning. Everything that you've got, I want you to give it all over to Him. Praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm sure, I'll praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when I know Praise when surrounded Cause praise is the waters My enemies drown in As long as I'm breathing I've got a reason to praise the Lord Oh my soul When I don't, I praise cause I know you're still in control. My praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound. All right, let's sing it now. Oh, my praise is the shout, hey, that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing. I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul, praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, I won't be quiet, I won't be quiet, my God is alive, how could I keep it inside? Because he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart and changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the Come on one more time, he picked me up. Because he picked me up, he turned me around. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Alright, we're ready now, we'll praise because we're sovereign, praise because you're sovereign, 
Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Hey, praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise you. Praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. Praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Come on, take a 